All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. Let's go ahead and work on factoring these quadratics. Let me run through my four methods, right? First thing I'm going to do is check for a GCF. Mm, I don't have one. Check to see if it's a difference of squares. Definitely not, because I have three terms, and a difference of squares would only have two. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, neither 15 or 1 are perfect squares, so it can't be a perfect square trinomial. That means i got to go with option number 4, factoring a general trinomial. And right away I recognize that this one's a little trickier because my a is something other than 1. I think the slide and divide method is going to be the fastest way to do this, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. We're going to slide that leading coefficient over, and it's going to leave me with x squared. Minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. Now remember guys, this slide and divide method is like a kung fu ninja math trick. Um, I've broken a number of rules in algebra, which a little bit later on I'll fix. But for now, you just want to be really careful because technically um, we're kind of using a, a neat little shortcut to get us to the answer, not really doing actual algebra because we're breaking a number of rules. Um, but anyway, here's the way it works. My leading coefficient is now a 1. Fantastic. Write your two binomials. And let's see what we get. Well, the x and the x, right, because x times x gets me x squared. Now I need two numbers. Multiply to 15, sum to a negative 8. Well, I think a negative 5 and a minus 3 would get me that. Negative 5 times a negative 3 would be a positive 15. And a negative 5 plus a negative 3 yeah, definitely a negative 8. But then you got to do the divide part of the slide and divide method. So we will divide by the original leading coefficient and go ahead and simplify. Uh, I can right, reduce each of those by a 5, so that's going to leave me with, uh, let's see, 1 third. And x, I can reduce each of those by a 3. So it's going to leave me with a negative one-fifth. And the final step, take those denominators, put them in front of the variable, and I get 3x minus 1, and the quantity 5x minus 1 are equal to 0, and you have got your factors. Hey, that's so easy. Let's try another one here. Once again, uh, check to see if you have a GCF, which you don't. Check to see if it's a difference of squares. It's not. Check to see if it's a perfect square trinomial. Definitely not. Negative 12 and 15 are not perfect squares. Option number four. Now, I could go ahead and set up a table and do that gigantic long method, which takes forever, or slide and divide. Let's go ahead and slide that negative 12 right on over. And that's going to leave me with x squared plus 8x. And 15 times a negative 12. Uh, actually, here, don't fat figure something on your calculator. i got a calculator right here. Uh, turns out to be negative 180. Okay, well, now this makes our life much easier, right? Because this leading coefficient is a 1. I know that I just need two binomials. I need an x and an x, because that's what gets me x squared. And now all I need are two numbers that multiply to a negative 180 and sum to a positive 8. Um, ooh, I think 18 and 10 will work. Yeah. Positive 18 times a negative 10 minus 180. And a positive 18 minus 10 leaves me with a positive 8. Fantastic, that's good work, but we're not done with the slide and divide method. I now need to divide those guys by my original leading coefficient. Simplify. Well, let's see here. Uh, 18 and 12, um, I believe I can take a 3 out of each of those, which will leave me with, uh, well, actually I can do more than that. I pull a 6 out of both of those, which is going to leave me with 3 halves. And negative and a negative will cancel each other out, leave you with a positive. And I can pull a 2 out of both of those, which will leave me with 5 6. Again, the last thing you need to do, take those denominators, move them out in front of the variable, 2x minus 3. 
and 6x plus 5 equal to 0, and I have got my factors. Once again, uh, if I had asked you to solve, I've said this a few times, but if I had asked you to solve, you would then just simply use the zero product property, right? To split these guys up, set them both equal to zero, right? And solve for x. Um, but I asked you to factor, so we would go ahead and stop right there. Guys, thanks for joining me for this page of the notes. Um, we will go ahead and head over to the next page where I think we'll get a little bit more practice with factoring quadratics, so I'll meet you over there.